Okay, so I showed you all in the transmission video, my drive shaft was off. That's because it broke and caused the leak in the transmission in the first place. This is the rear attachment or the rear flange where it comes off the transfer case. And we've got our front yoke here where it just bolts on with two little U-bolts. Uh, so I took this off the day it broke. I took it off just so I could still drive and not have that horrible vibration. And uh, we couldn't repair the old one, so I got a new drive shaft in. It's laying here beside me. Um, so I'm going to get it lifted up here and get it bolted back in. It's just nuts and bolts, real easy. And um, yeah, not a whole lot to it. I don't know if I can get set up here on a tripod or not, but I'll try. Now, of course, I do have my foreman with me today helping out. Got her set up just uh, hanging out. The other two kids, the two middle kids, are napping. I'm going to try to get this thrown on here. Let me see. It's kind of a weird perspective for you guys, but I think it'll work. Here's that front yoke. Oh, let me get the camera off my board. Y'all get seasick. Here's that front yoke where the front drive shaft attaches. And you can see right there in y'all's camera that rear housing. So let me see if I can lift this thing up here and uh, get it lined up. Heavy, awkward sort of thing. The old drive shaft also had U joints in it that were not greasable. This one is greasable, which is always better. You have to be careful. For right now, I'm just going to set it up here. You have to be real careful setting these up because this front shaft actually has the ability to slide out. You don't want that to happen. These U bolts just got a piece of tape on them to keep the caps on. So pull that off there. And then this, if I can make the space anyway, should set right up there. And our U bolts, our U joints, I'm sorry, U joints, just set right in that. There we go. So get the U joints in that yoke right there. And it actually has got little tabs that, that you, you can see there's like a little tab that kind of holds it in there. So get that set up there. And these front little bolts for it are a, they're an eight millimeter, I believe. And mine are a little worn out, so I have to use absolutely have to use a six-sided ratchet or six-sided socket. When I took it off that day at the store, he tried to give me a uh, 12 sided socket and it wouldn't turn them and so I started second guessing that it was eight millimeter I was thinking I was starting to convince myself that it was some kind of odd size because I couldn't get a seven to fit couldn't get eight to fit okay so there's just this little U clamp here and the bolts and so it just the U clamp goes either side of the U joint started on here of course it's all sorts of nasty under here because my oil cooler is still leaking so you can see that nice big smudge on my arm where I accidentally touched the underside of my frame it's bad that it's that dirty and I allow it to be that way but it's like everything else hey look I can actually turn my drive shaft couldn't do that before when I had to uh, well, it helped me, I guess, to an extent. When I took the drive shaft off the day it broke, I couldn't turn it because the front axle was in a bind due to some hubs I'd put on about a year ago. The hub and bearing assemblies—they were the wrong ones. Or wrong. They weren't the proper fitment, even though the website I got them from said, uh, you know, exact replacement part. Um, and so for a year, my front drive shaft has been spinning, even though I've been out of four-wheel drive because those hubs had it in a bind, had the axle in a bind. The shop that I took it to to redo the front suspension found that for me. And yeah, unfortunately my impact wrench is out at the farm serving as a screwdriver. So I'm gonna be putting these babies on the old fashioned way. They're just tight enough that I can't do it. <laughs> They're not handy. So I gotta run them all in. Anyway, that day that I went to pull the drive shaft off, yeah, it it, uh, it wouldn't turn. 
because it essentially was telling it was locked to four-wheel drive. Had the truck been up on blocks, I guess, I guess the front axles would have turned. Oopsie, that ain't good. That baby turned around. Oh, tried to shift on me a little bit there. No, 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 no. That slipped out of that little valley that it sits in there. Well, I spun it around. Make sure that doesn't happen, and really be careful when you guys are doing anything with drive shafts and U-joints, especially with the new ones. The old ones tend to be stuck, or sometimes they'll fall off, but uh, those little caps that go on the U-joint have got a, uh, some needle bearings in them, and if those caps fall off, a lot of times those needle bearings will fall out too, and then you got a big mess trying to find your needle bearings, put them all back in. You can put a little dab of grease in there to really help hold them in, which they should be greased anyway, but some of them aren't greased very well. Ouch, man, it's putting a crick in my arm. Oh yeah, see, she turns readily now. <laughs> I'll have to find, I'll have to go lock the truck in four wheel drive or something. The back end is a 12 millimeter, and you have to use a 12 point socket because it's this kind of little star looking head but it actually works what it works with a 12 point socket six point won't do it because the six point won't grab it right so what 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 do you think about it huh they still can't see you why are you getting fussy at me you think i'm doing something wrong Okay, so these, the bolts actually go in from the back and thread into that drive shaft adapter. One started. What? What, baby? I can't touch you, I'm too dirty. I'm too dirty. Shh. All four started. Now I just torque them down. I think the foreman wants to go to lunch. So, anyway, I've got them all bolted in now. I just gotta torque them, which I've gotta go check my manual for the torque specifications anyway. Um, and find some way to either lock my hubs or do something so this shaft won't spin long enough that I can actually um, torque it down. So we're pretty much done. That's pretty simple. Last thing I'll do is there's a skid plate that goes on um, behind this cross brace right here. This is a skid plate that I took off to help, or I guess it goes on the front of it maybe. Yeah, it goes on right here across this. Anyway, whatever, there's a, there's a skid plate. It's four more bolts. Put the skid plate back on just to be safe. And uh, yeah, we're done. Drive shaft back on and in theory, everything should work.